Welcome to Carly Tackle's Dust Collection. I'm not going to claim to be an expert, but I did learn a few things when trying to set up my own dust collection in my garage. First thing I learned was shop vacs are not really meant to be true dust collection systems for a garage. However, I'm using two shop vacs to hopefully give me the power that I need. I also am using a dust stopper that was purchased from Home Depot. This allows all the sawdust to drop into the bucket instead of entering your shop vac and clogging your filter. I'm also using two inch PVC and two and a half inch flex hose instead of the traditional four inch. And I'll explain that in a little bit. To help focus the suction where I need it to be, I'm using blast gates. These are two and a half inch. They also make them in four inch diameters as well. You're going to need some hose clamps and of course the flexible hose. You're going to put the flexible hose over the gate and use that clamp to tighten it in place. You want to install your gates as close to the main line as possible. And if you think about it, you want to stop the suction from going anywhere where you don't want it to go, which is going to be really inconvenient. Now you may not be able to reach the clamps with your hands to shut them off. However, when you install them, try to do it at an angle where that you could use a pole or a hook to pull them open and close them shut. Another tip that I learned, try to avoid 90 degree angles. You will lose power when it's trying to make that tight of corner. Instead, use 45, do some distance, and another 45 to make your corners. Now, the reason I use two and a half inch diameter instead of four inch diameter is that our shop backs are not really powerful enough to send that suction in a four inch diameter. A four inch diameter would allow you to suck up volume like wood chips, but my shop backs wouldn't be able to do it. So instead I'm using two and a half and I'm mostly focusing on sod dust. To give you as much power as possible, try to avoid using a lot of flex hose. The flexo ribs have friction and reduce your power. The same can be said with couplers and connections. So really think about what you wanna do before you just start making it a super complex system. In addition to all the tools that I have that I want connected to this dust collection system, I also wanted to create a sanding station, a hose that I can have wrapped around and connect to my orbital sander, as well as my pocket hole jig. Now this accessory hose that I had for the shot back, I connected to this line, but I can easily disconnect it from this location and connect it to my center line, which I'll show you here in a minute. And just like that, I am ready to grab my pocket hole jigs and start drilling holes. When I'm done with the hose, I can just wrap it up and I put a hook on the side there that will hold it up. Here's how I would disconnect that accessory hose and move it around the shop. Some more words of caution. The longer your hose network is, the worse your suction power is going to be. Instead of having one line that wraps around your garage and connects it, consider doing multiple routes using the gate so you can shut off full suctions to a whole section and focus it. So it's like having one channel to your table saw and one channel to your miter saw that you can individually shut off so you should not lose as much suction. There are some really nice adapters out there that will allow you to convert one line to multiple functions. So here I'm using this main center line to vacuum the entire floor in the garage with this handle and some very long extension hoses and I can easily disconnect it. Here is a closer look at my floor wand and this adapter swivels at one end to make it easier. Now that we're done vacuuming the floor, we can easily connect this to my crosscut sled that's homemade, naturally, and now I can use it on my table saw. I'm using another one of those swivel adapters along with a 1 and 7 8 adapter that works with all my shop back accessory hoses. And now that we're done with the crosscut sled, I can remove the adapter and with my handle, I can connect it directly to the back of the table saw.
I wanted to be able to turn on the shop back from anywhere in the garage and so I have a variety of tools scattered. Now you can do this multiple ways. One of the most common ways is to get one of those plugins with a remote control and then you just need to have that remote control on your body as you're moving around your shop to turn on your shop remotely. Or if you're into some technology like I am, you can use smart home adapters like this Wemo smart plug. Now the smart plug you can control from your phone and turn on and off, or you can use NFC tags, which I'll show you here in a second, each one of your workstations to turn it on. I have an NFC sticker attached to each one of my big tools. Now there are special ones that allow you to stick to metal and work. I'll include the links in the video description below. Now I have one on my router table, as well as my miter saw. There's my tag right there. And then one on my table saw. So anytime that I go to scan it with my phone, I also have the non-metal sticker versions throughout the garage. Thanks for watching Carly Tackles Dust Collection. I hope you learned something. I learned a lot doing the research. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you'd like to see more videos similar to this, please subscribe to my channel, Carly Tackles DIY Tools and Gadgets Tips and Tricks. Make sure you hit the bell to receive notifications when I release new content.